So it's an amazing opportunity. If you guys would like to contact me to get that resource or set that up for your organization, my cards again are in the back. Another thing that we have is NYC Well. So NYC Well is our 24-hour hotline. Anyone dealing with any mental health crisis can call. The kids can text or chat. And a mental health professional will be on the line with them, helping them cope with that situation. And they will stay on the line until they provide them with a resource in their community that it, they can access at any time. So it's a great resource. It's a 24-hour hotline. It's confidential. Anyone can use it at any age. All that information is in the back. And if you'd like to speak to me later on, I'm available. So thank you so much. Uh, next speaker, Antonio Simitilli. Cimitelli, Gidea Cimitelli, I have some good news. I declared my candidacy for city council. Thank you so much. Democratic <laughs> <laughs> primary, by the way. And uh, I want to speak about the election. How important the election is tonight. And this is more for the members here, because I've been here three times a month, every month, for years, and we've come to a point, a fork in the road here. All the issues that I've been complaining for years has been with problems with the leadership of this board. The leadership of this board has been the problem. Now this board has come to this fork in the road, and we all have to make, not I, I'm not a member, the members here have to vote your conscience. How many meetings, how many discussions, how many debates, how many yelling, screaming? I'm not yelling tonight. I'm calm. But I hope that the board members here vote the right way and change, change the leadership. This, this board has been becoming very divisive and we need change. So I beg you, I humbly beg you to change the leadership and vote for the right person. Thank you so much. <laughs> Next speaker is Joe Bellini. Good evening. I understand that one of the many traffic goals in the very near future is to put more cars on the Pullman Parkway via the Bassett Avenue Extension. That may be good for the Morris Park area, but what about the Pelham Bay area? This traffic pattern will result in an increase a traffic volume going to Pelham Bay with most vehicles disobeying traffic signs and using St. Paul Avenue in an effort to avoid the congestion at the station. If the new DOT traffic studies costing thousands and hundreds of dollars, promises, broken promises from many politicians and the community board over the past 10 years to address these problems, nothing really, nothing has been done or even tried to preserve the small amount of the remaining residential character of Pelham Bay. As a matter of fact, more inaction on the part of our elected and selected representatives has seen the term of blind eye and let our neighborhood be assaulted and destroyed. The late Joe Lotto and a few others actually took the time and walked the streets around Pablo Bay Station a few years ago. They witnessed for themselves the unbelievable volume of computer traffic and trucks speeding through our residential neighborhood, especially during the evening commute. Things have gotten worse, much worse. Whatever happened to Joe's plan? Wasn't it approved by CB10? Our Pelham Bay neighborhood is being choked with vehicle traffic, air pollution, litter noise, lack of street parking, and then the neglect of the governing bodies that are supposed to serve and protect the residents of Pelham Bay. In addition to, and with the same enthusiasm that they serve the residents of Morris Park, the Hutch Center, Co-op City, etc. In addition, 
to an unreasonable volume of traffic. We still have unchecked squatters on St. Paul Avenue that monopolized the on-street parking with many cars permanently parked on the street. The HIV facility at the Pelham brand that according to their own website is now a short-term homeless shelter. Despite all lies to the contrary, crushes the morale of the residents, decreases property values, and to add insult to injury, that they didn't try to maintain the appearance of their leased property. Traffic condition at Pelham Bay Station continues unchecked with no traffic or parking enforcement and no improvements implemented. Speeding and the incidence of vehicle and pedestrian accidents continue to increase. Try crossing the residential streets near the station during rush hours. You better have plenty of time and leave even more patience. What about Pelham Bay? 30 seconds. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please raise your hand. 
They have over 200,000 square footage of built space for stores. Why do we need to have another mall? It absolutely does not make sense. That means more congestion. That means more um, decreased air quality. We, there's so many things that we can do with that mall. I'm a former president, uh, CEC president of CEC 11, and we are overcrowded. We can build an educational facility, a business facility. We can have a state-of-the-art theater in our community. We can have multicultural events there. And I just think there's just so many other things that I'm a former <laughs> community board 12 member, and I was absolutely in abhorrence to the fact that they even approved it. Because there was a time, even when um, they were going to design the bridge going into City Island, we stood together as brothers and sisters, and we stood with you and we said, no, hell no, you're not going to build that. And they said, okay, well, we're, gonna, we're not going to give you, um, we're going to take back the design, and you're going to have to wait. And what did you say? Take back the design because we don't want it. So I'm very um, disappointed in um, Community Board 12 and how they voted, but I did go down to the borough president's office. I've gone down to the uh, planning board down um, in Manhattan to say that you have not engaged Community Board 10, you have not engaged Community Board 11 in this process, and you guys are going to be adversely affected by the trucks going in and out of the Thruway and the Hutchinson River Parkway. So I just wanted to say that um, you have to get on board and you can't let that vote go over because we don't need that more. I also am running for city council seat as well. I didn't realize it was that many people here that were running. Um, I am running against an incumbent, um, Andy King, who also, which I did not know, the developer said that he actually... Oh, I can't say? No. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I, I won't. But the developer was, I'm just saying, I'm not going to mention the name. The developer was saying that there were input into the design prior to the vote. So there has been community, there's been um, engagement with our elected officials, but the community is not engaged. And I think that's really what I want to say to you tonight. Thank you so much.
came here for two, uh, two reasons. Uh, but first I want to say, um, when I was on the board, even though I disagreed with a lot of people here, I always respected them, and I don't think you could find a better uh, bunch of people, no matter what their um, makeup is and what they believe in. And um, I remember the arguments and the, the agreements, and I really believe that everybody is just trying to do the best they can for the community. And, I, and under John and Martin and Diane and Virginia, uh, great, great, uh, great chairs, and all of them in their different ways. Um, that's all I want to say about that. Okay, just, I just came from a meeting. Just came, <laughs> just came from a meeting. Um, uh, my union. I'm very proud of my union. We were the first union to march in a NAMI uh, walk um, and, in the country, and we, from the first uh, New York City Disability Pride Parade two years ago. We've been involved in it each time. Just came from a planning meeting from the Pelham Grand. I was treated with respect. No loiterers. Uh, and anyway, so um, Sunday, July 9th is going to be the Disability Pride. It's the 27th anniversary of the ADA. And uh, my union is going to be involved again. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking for myself, but I think I can say that my union is going to be involved again. And then another thing, I'm speaking as myself, not as part of my union or anything, but um, I just wanted, I was going to come last month, but then um, the bill was passed for one year. So then I thought I'd come this month because there's still problems. Um, a lot of you uh, have heard about the health and hospitals crisis. Now, even though they're not union managers, 397 managers and before that, 70 were laid off. Uh, uh, hundreds of more, uh, uh, buy, uh, some type of uh, buyouts or whatever, and uh, retirements before they want to be. I mean, they have families, a lot of them live in this area. They, 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 this is not the end. Uh, they could be massive thousands of layoffs in health and hospitals. And one of the reasons for that is, even though uh, the Affordable Care Act did a lot of things, one of the things it did, it left a lot of hospitals, private hospitals off the hook, and where they didn't have to maintain services, they didn't have to treat people, all of them, depending on what type of hospital it is, uh, they did not have to treat the people uh, like they used to when they got federal money. Uh, another thing is, because all the hospitals, private and city, uh, have empty beds, what they are going after, the private hospitals are going after, Beds. People are Medicaid to have beds. So what has happened is the Medicaid funding for the health and hospitals, even though they're maintaining them, especially the undocuments, the aliens and everything, what, what's happened is the, 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 the Medicaid funding is going away from them, even though they're providing most of the care, going to five other hospitals. One is Montefiore. One is Montefiore. And so forth. There's a bill that they did pass. Um, safety Net uh, Hospital Bill, Assembly 7763, S5661B is a new one. And I'm going to come in front of uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Rosario. I sent Martin and Bishop Rosario the packet here. And um, I, 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 I want to keep you guys informed because this community board, if anything, has a very good relationship with one of the most powerful people we have that represents our area, Senator Klein. And Senator Klein is going to be very in, uh, important in this area. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thank you. Next speaker is John Serini. John, you have three minutes. No bother picking one. Yeah. <laughs> I have no intention of apology. So first I uh, Excuse me, everybody. I'm going to face them because they're the ones I want to talk to. First, I want to congratulate and welcome Matt. I got a chance to go to his office, and I'm looking forward to a community to working with you and uh, seeing your enthusiasm and uh, getting things done quicker. But most importantly, I think that we're all hoping that the uh, notification goes out to the community because that's important. That's something that was lacking in the past. So that's the first thing. Secondly, I'd like to talk about uh, the 10-story building that's coming up at 3250 Westchester Avenue. Uh, I know the plans only went in last week, but we really need to, as a community board, try to jump on this. And I don't know that they even have to come to the community board because they might have this thing called as of right, and that's fine. But I still think that the community board should put together some type of written letter in protest. This community does not want that building. We do not need that building. It's going to be an eyesore. 
We, we do not need two stories of commercial space and eight stories of medical space. So please, as a community board, get together, put something in writing, send it to DOB, and try to fight this. Because this community does not want that. It's going to become an eyesore here. Secondly, I'd like to talk about the, uh, the Home for Developmental Disabilities. I missed a meeting you guys had the other day. And uh, I can tell you that um, I just think that, again, the community board, and Matt, I would, I would hope that uh, I could work with you on this. The community board should work together with people from the uh, Office for People with Developmental Disabilities and try to find out for us as homeowners and residents as to the six residents that are living in these homes, what are their disabilities, do they have anger issues, do they have violence, violence tendencies, because we all have children that live here. I have a 15-year-old daughter. I don't want to worry about her going out and having a problem with one of the residents who has 18 employees to watch them 24-7 with no curfew. So I think, again, we need to have the community board step in and get actively involved before it happens. That's all I have to say. Thank you. What you're asking is illegal. They have a law. We can't I understand. Ask, I understand. But we can't ask those questions, and they won't give us those answers. Well, then we need, we need more time. you got to request more than 40 days to fight it, because sometimes, like, you guys are going on break now. And what's going to happen with this 10-story building? We have 45 days to fight it after it's approved, but we're going to be on break until the end of September. So how do we fight it? Every time the chairperson wants, he can call a special meeting. Okay. Well, then let's work on calling a special meeting sometime in, uh, in August, because we need to fight it.
nomination, any of those who are going to vote for me, I encourage you to vote for Pete Sullivan. Thank you. Yes. Your vote. Wait, who are you? Prince or Sullivan? For chairperson. Chairperson. Prince or Sullivan. Your voice. Chairperson. Peter Sullivan or Martin? Peter Sullivan or Martin? Yes. Yes. Um, Peter Sullivan. Joe Russo? Mr. 
Sala. Great. Tony Salvini, is that your participant? Oh, I was at a like, school board meeting, I get confused. Now, Peter Sullivan. <laughs> Sawyer. Great. Ms. Samaj Williams. Sullivan. Sullivan. <laughs> Ms. Velasquez.
Vote tally is as follows. John Morano, 21. Tom Accomando, 9. John Morano is the first vice chairman. We will now begin the vote for second vice chair, Elaine Juano Ilukovic and Joe Boypo. I read, I'm sorry. I'm sorry.
Um, and so uh, I want again to thank Matt for uh, taking this responsibility on and to, to welcome him. I want to also congratulate all of those board members who received their reappointment letters um, from the borough president. Uh, we thank you for your service. Uh, we hope the summer is uh, a quiet one for everybody, but as uh, was said earlier, there are a number of issues that won't wait until September and that you will have to work over the summer to, to address. I just have two quick items I do want to share with you from, uh, from our office. Uh, the first is that this past uh, Tuesday, or last week, excuse me, uh, the Lieutenant Governor and the Borough President and the Mayor's Office held a groundbreaking for York Studios, which is going to be a major uh, movie production company in the Soundview section of the Bronx. Um, it is a $100 million development, 350,000 square feet of studio space, back lot space, and it is a great development. It is a, uh, a good addition to the production company that is in Hunts Point, which is, uh, from Hunts Point, what is it? Yeah. Silver Cup, right, the Silver Cup North, which is uh, operating right now. There are a number of shows that are being filmed here in the Bronx. And today, our building at 851 Grand Concourse is often used by production companies, the courtrooms, the exteriors, and they were there today filming. Um, Madam Secretary has been there, a number of the Law and Orders, and uh, the Bronx has many locations that have experience, and I know the City Island folks are well aware of it, uh, of how a movie production has grown in this firm. And then secondly, it's, while it's not announced directly from, from our office, we share with um, the Mayor's office the new park that will be in Co-op City, uh, the Waterfront Park. I know that there was an announcement with the Mayor and Ruben Bay Corp and the Board, and uh, it is something that I know the Co-op City folks have been looking for waterfront access uh, for a very long time, and uh, finally it will come to fruition, and all of you, uh, as the process moves forward, the Department of Parks will be coming to you, um, am I correct, to, uh, to talk about the proposed design, so it is something that is, um, was much needed, and we were happy that uh, we will be able to support it. Uh, in addition, there was the um, opening of Orchard Beach, where the mayor attended during the, Bronx, the week he was in the Bronx, where um, there was a commitment of the 40 to 50 million dollars that's needed for Orchard Beach. Um, again, you will be an important part of that. Uh, you will review those plans for the re renovation and the rejuvenation of the uh, pavilion. They have um, some plans that I'm sure they'll be sharing with you over the next year or so, but it is something that is going to make a great difference to uh, the ambiance that is Orchard Beach. And uh, it's, in, it's in your district, and it is something that you will have a, a, good, a great say over as to how the project will start. Uh, with that, again, I wish you all a happy and safe summer. And uh, two fireworks. Mark. Fireworks are on June the 29th, uh, beginning at, well, the program begins at 7, it opens at 6, the fireworks are at 9 uh, and, uh, p.m. Excuse me. Thank you.